Enzo, could you start by outlining what some of the key benefits of a unified communications platform would be? And I'm also interested in understanding how a UC deployment would advantage two different kinds of customers, the enterprise and the smaller organization. It's a very good question. Uh, unified communication uh, uh, collaboration solution has now come of age and actually can get uh, pretty good solutions from a number of vendors. Typically they come with uh, integrated modalities, so you can have both voice, video and data integrated, typically deliver through a fairly intuitive uh, user experience. But if we left it at that, unified communication would just be an integrated platform and uh, with a cool user interface, but would truly not enable a lot of key business benefit for the enterprise. Uh, for instance, enterprises are looking at collaboration more strategically. For instance, they would like to actually use collaboration to increase the top line revenue or uh, enable the sales team to be much more effective by spending more time with their customers in the field or potentially to even increase the quality of the products and services that the, a company makes or even uh, reduce the transportation costs and increase the productivity of their employees. Now, the four key ingredients that are required for a unified communication solution to deliver on these benefits are, first of all, mobility. Uh, most of the enterprises now have a large percentage of workers that are working away from the office and therefore need to be very effective in communicating both internally and externally with their, uh, during the day. Uh, second, they need to be able to have video as part of the uh, communication mechanism. Uh, people make decisions face to face and uh, video therefore becomes a key ingredient to enable them to make decisions faster. Uh, the third requirement is that the uh, solution has to be uh, secure because now we're enabling communication outside of the traditional boundaries of the enterprise and we've allowed communication to occur over the internet. We're now exposing communication to a number of potential threats and therefore security is paramount. And the fourth ingredient is about cloud. Uh, no longer company need to be able to have just a fixed CapEx-based solution. They need to be able to um, absorb and consume communication in a very flexible way, and so they're looking for both OPEX and cloud-based solutions. If we have these four, we can now drive a lot of benefit to the enterprise. And the smaller organization can similarly benefit from these four. Absolutely. There is no truly difference between a mid-market or a small enterprise versus a, a large enterprise. What changes is the scale, uh, sometimes the level of um, complexity uh, that the networks uh, need to absorb, uh, but the use cases are pretty much the same. And uh, actually, according to Foresight, we see that about 40% of the employees in the mid-market are now mobile, and therefore mobility is a very important requirement for this customer base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two of the other features of enterprise-grade collaboration systems that are in the news are presence, so that's the ability to see at a glance what the status of your peers is, and media escalation or the ability to move conversations from chat to email to phone or to other mediums as needed. How real are the use cases for these features and what needs to be done to make them available to business users? Yes, presence uh, uh, information or presence uh, indication is an important component of a unified communication, but at the same time is not a critical one. And let me explain why. Um, the two most used uh, messages in an instant message in the chat session are, are you there and can you talk? Because people want to conduct business in a real-time collaboration manner, and so they tend to go either with a video session or on a, a voice session and be able to now interact um, dynamically with their counterparts. So while those are an interesting and important component of unified communication, what's more important is to make sure that the unified communication solution enables a true real-time collaboration across all the modalities. Mm -hmm. Video is paramount to the solution and uh, by using actually um, our own uh, data within Avaya where we deploy now video across 15,000 users across the enterprise, we can see the video is truly the key communication mechanism that uh, corporations need to be adopted to truly drive the value of unified communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about growth in video collaboration and you shared some statistics with us today in your presentation, thank you very much. Are you seeing this within your own customer base and how is Avaya helping users build the kind of UC platform 
that is needed to support the heavy bandwidth demands of video. Video is absolutely a core component of the communication solution. And uh, by the way, video is not new to the enterprise and definitely not an insignificant component of the spend uh, <coughs> in the enterprise market. Um, according to Winhouse Research, the uh, video collaboration market is about a $3 billion market annually. So very healthy and uh, very important. But there are a number of limitations with video today. Uh, in particular, video solutions on the past tend to be relatively expensive. Uh, they require quite a bit of bandwidth. And uh, also, they are still, in many cases, harder to use. And because of this, according to Gartner, while 48% of enterprises uh, have adopted some sort of video collaboration solution in a network, only 28% of employees are actually using it. Now, video so is present in enterprise, but not pervasive. And it's now possible to now um, leverage the value, the power of video, by making video integrated into the day-to-day -day unified communication experience of all of us by integrating video into your unified communication client and make it available to run on any device of user choice, could be Macs, PCs, iPhones, iPads, or Android devices. We can now make it available across, but this has to be done with a low bandwidth and high resolution. If we do so, then video can truly unleash its power and enable everybody to make decisions faster. Mm -hmm. Could we move back to an older method of communications for just one minute? I'm interested in um, adoption of IP-based voice services, which in Canada was a little slower than it might have been in some other parts of the world. And, you know, um, providers like Avaya have made improvements that, you know, moved us past issues like voice jitter, but there's still some concern about reliability. So how are you at Avaya addressing that lingering concern over reliability of IP-based communications? Reliability is a paramount. Um, the uh, communication infrastructure, not just for voice, but for video, instant message, and data, is the lifeblood of many corporations. So uh, at Avaya in particular, we took it to heart to develop a, an extremely reliable collaboration uh, framework, architecture, and solution. Um, and in particular, the standard in the industry is what's called the five nines, or five nine of reliability that translates to less to about five minutes of potential downtime per year. So um, with the VI architecture, which is based on both H323 and uh, SIP, we can now guarantee the level of high availability even across the world. For instance, last year we introduced a new functionality called geo-redundancy that enables uh, a, um, an enterprise to have two data centers as far apart as they want in the world and be able to mirror the uh, communication across the two of them. So let's say it's a catastrophic situation in one country that uh, communication can switch um, immediately to a backup solution and the user will not be able to even perceive that the communication has changed the server. There's a capability called uh, uh, call preservation or session preservation where the user will continue to communicate to their counterpart even though the communication has actually switched from one continent to the other. So high availability has made um, a lot of progress and we're very proud of Avaya to actually lead the way and provide this capability to enterprises around the globe. Mm -hmm. I just have one last question, and it's also geographical. I'm interested in mobility. You've discussed it, or you've mentioned it a couple of times already in our conversation, but just could we close with some better understanding of how Avaya is supporting the workforce mobility trend, or even the trend towards uh, larger distributed networks of B2B collaboration? Absolutely. Mobility, as I mentioned, is an absolutely critical component both of mid-market and for large enterprises. And we are uh, leading in the development of solutions that are easy to use and can be deployed on any um, device of the user choice. I mentioned earlier about video, and uh, uh, this is integrated in the full collaboration solution that runs today on Macs, PCs, iPhones, Android, and other type of devices. We use it pervasively in Avaya, our customer are using it on a day-to-day -day basis. And since you can now have not just video collaboration, but also document sharing capability, you can now present information anywhere you are. You have full controls of the conference, so you can actually mute and mute the participants. Uh, you can switch between uh, the roster of people you're watching as well as the content. So you have full flexibility and empowers the traveling user 
to now communicate effectively internally and externally as if they were in the office. Mm -hmm. And so it's absolutely critical and uh, we encourage uh, um, our customer and business partner to look at this Scopia solution as one way to help them address the mobility requirements. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your insight, Enzo. I Thank appreciate you. it. it was a pleasure.